nothing quite like Southern Fried Football with a few <laughs> Cajun spices thrown in. Florida leading 13-7. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, and Jill Arrington with you from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, where uh, a crowd in excess of 90,000, for the most part, sitting in stunned silence at halftime. The heavily favored Tigers of LSU undefeated, trailing by six. Chris Jackson will kick off for LSU. Florida opens with the ball. Andre Caldwell, Kelvin Kite of the two deep men. And this one. Ugly but effective. Yeah, very ugly. <laughs> and just a moment ago, Jill Arrington had a chance to chat with Florida coach Ron Zook. Coach Zook, your team came out playing very aggressive in a tough environment. What did you tell your team about keeping that intensity in the we, second? You know, we got to maintain the same thing. We got to do what we did. We got to play 30 more minutes. Just continue to do what we've been doing. You know, this is a good football team. We've we've had some bad breaks. Now we just we got to play 30 more minutes. All right, coach. Thank you. And here is Chris Leak, who had a very very effective first 30 minutes in this ball game. From the 20, first down and 10. Here's the handoff to Sean Wynn. He comes right. Nice opening play out to the 26-yard line. That's a gain of six for the Florida Gators. Well, Todd, uh, Ron Zook kind of addressed yeah. the difficulty they've had in the second half this year. Well, I, I will go one step further and say I think these next 30 minutes will be the most important 30 minutes of Florida's season this year because in their three losses, they've been outscored 55 to 21. Now, everything went well for them in the first half, but they only got a six-point lead over LSU in LSU Stadium. LSU did nothing right in that first half offensively. Part of that credit goes to Florida's defense, but these 30 minutes now for Chris Leak and the Florida Gators, vitally important. Second down and four, Deshaun Wynn hit at the line of scrimmage. Marquise Hill makes the tackle. That's going to bring up a third down. Well, at the half, rushing yards. 39 to 9, but passing yards. Yeah, passing yards in this right here. Four of eight for Florida on third down. Again, LSU coming in only allowed 21% conversion. Tops in the SEC, 50% for Florida in that first half. And here is a third and three for the season before this game. Florida was two of nine on third and three. Now they're two of ten. Well, the only thing good about that was they tried to throw the ball to Ben True. That's the first time that they tried to throw the football to him, and he's too good of a football player to be a non-factor. If you want to upset a high-ranked team, you have to get the football in the hands of your best football players, and Ben True is one of the best football players on Florida's team, and that's the first time he touched the football. Eric Wilbur, the true freshman, on the punt for the third time. Skyler Green returned the first one 80 yards for a touchdown and only LSU score. This one what high. And my goodness. <laughs> Skyler Green at the seven yard line. Excellent blocks. Out to the 26. Two really good blocks that time. Ronnie Prude and also Justin Vincent, number 25, both down there and getting nice blocks to get that ball out from their own 10 yard line. Watch Skyler Green wait for a half a second, set up those two blocks, and then get straight up the field. Nice execution by the LSU punt return team. Now that was 63 yards for the freshman Eric Wilbur. Now Wilbur claims that he punted one 110 yards earlier this year. You know what my response to that is? Yes. Kickers. <laughs> <laughs> this one caught by Dimitri Robinson. Bobbled it then uh, brought it back to his chest. Number 88. Now, I think the onus is really on the LSU offense. That first half they had six offensive drives five punts and an interception and and I think it's crazy but I go back to their very first possession when they they completed a first down pass and their first third and short they bobbled the snap and they didn't make the first down and they were discombobulated from that point on now second down and one after 35 here's the handoff a dive bounces off his own man and gets around to Rodney Reed forced him almost to get outside and he did before Gus Scott made the tackle that is a first and ten one thing I didn't see LSU do in that first half as we take a look at this conversion on second down pretty good job by Florida at the point of attack but a die bounces off and gets to the outside to to pick up the first down but I didn't see Florida or LSU just make any quick throws to Michael Clayton 
When Keewon Ratliff gives him a cushion on the outside, they need to just raise up and throw hitches to Michael Clayton. Right now, he's got a cushion. They need to get him the football. Now well, here's Mark looking for Clayton, but he's going to get hit from behind. See, here's the problem. That took too long. I mean, they tried to run a deeper route to get him the football. My thinking is, when they give him a cushion, check off to a three-step drop and throw him a hitch instead of trying to roll to him and throw a deeper comeback. Let him catch the ball when they give him space and then try to make something happen. Bobby McRae with his second sack of the day, lost in five at second and 15. Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, telling us earlier in this week he needs a big game out of Bobby McRae if Florida is going to win today. Second and 15. Mock in the script. Stunts. Quick flip. Little inside screen to Skyler Green, and he works out to the 43-yard line. Now, Michael Clayton, who just might be the best player on this team. Yeah, well, he's a tremendous athlete. I mean, he's six foot four, 200 pounds. He's a physical wide receiver. And he started the season like gangbusters. 23 catches and four touchdowns in the first three games. Now, the last three games, part of it has been coverage has kind of gone to him. And part of it is because Devery Henderson and Skylar Green have stepped up and made some plays. But today, they've tried to get him the football, but they just... They've tried to get him the football down the field instead of just getting into his hands right away. Now, see, they can't do it right now because they're right up on it, okay? When they give him a cushion, that's when they got to give him the football quick. Underneath, Michael Clayton, there he is. And he's going to be caught short of the first down at the 48-yard line as Keywan Ratliff got down low to make the tackle. And that would bring up fourth down. This is a nice job by Michael Clayton going all the way across the formation. He had to reach back a little bit for the catch, and then Kiwan Ratliff able to knock his feet out from under him and stop him short of that first down. And the punting unit will come back on. I don't think they'll do it, but this would be a, a, a fake decent punt? place for a fake punt right here. You know, to try to change the momentum right away here in the third quarter. And Cameron Vaughn, the linebacker, is one of the uh, up men. Donnie Jones is the punter. Jones lets it go. Nice high. Very deep. Maybe too far. Yep. So the Gators hold. Nick Saban's team goes on defense once again. We're underway in the third quarter. Florida by six. MSU offense is on the sideline now. Joseph Adai, the running back. And a moment ago, he was getting some uh, medical attention. His left knee. Florida by six. First and ten at the 20. Four-man LSU rush. Here's Leap. Right side. O.J. Small. Sixth catch. Modest game. Now to the 25-yard line. Chris Lee, third start today, Todd. And he's looked good today. I mean, he has been in control. He's been poised. He hasn't been rattled by this crowd or by the LSU defense. He's made good decisions. Here you say, well, he got sacked, but he didn't throw the ball. He didn't force it. He's thrown the ball away when he's had nothing down the field. So he's made good decisions as well as some good plays. Second down and five now from his own 25-yard line. For the day, 14 of 22, 167 yards and a touchdown. Under center, uh, whoops, slipped and fell. Now well, busted play. They, they. Whatever they were trying to do, they got too cute for themselves that time. Chris Leak was trying to audible, and whatever he called, he didn't remember what he called because he went one way and everybody else went the other way. Third and 11. And they put themselves in a, a precarious situation. Again, they were four of eight in the first half on third down. They missed their first third down opportunity of the second half, and third and 11, he has to be careful with the football. LSU has three down. See if they bring only three. Nope. They're going to bring five. Here's Leak. Down low for Ben Troop. Trapped. Incomplete. Fourth down. Two times they've tried now to get the ball to Ben Troop on third down, and both throws have been low. <laughs> This one just off the ground before Troop able to get those big paws on it. 
And another punt situation now for Eric Wilbur. Troop yet to catch the ball. And Wilbur on the punt for the fourth time. See that average today? 56 yeah. yards. Had one earlier this season in which he averaged 51 yards. Here's the punt. It's another dandy. And Skyler Green backs up, takes it with his back foot on the 25 yard line. Now the ball is down at the 40 yard line. That's a 55 yard punt and 14 on the return. 13 7, third quarter. LSU trails by six. 90,000 watts now as LSU goes back on offense. Chuck Gardner, our statistician, came all the way from Baltimore to suggest that that guy's a zoology major. <laughs> Did you have any of that gator sausage last night? No, I did Over not. Over walk-ons? No, I, I left, I left that good. all for you. Yeah, it was good stuff, man. <laughs> First time I ever had gator. <laughs> Here's the handoff to LSU's Justin Vincent. He comes left. There's a flag at the 38-yard line. Well, while we uh, wait to sort this out, let's bring you up to date on things around the SEC today. Most significant this afternoon. Auburn, 3-0 and in SEC West play now. They defeat Arkansas and Fayetteville by 7. Vanderbilt falls to Navy. Ole Miss wins big at against Arkansas State. Mississippi State leading Memphis. Alabama 14 over Southern Miss. And tonight, key game, Georgia at Tennessee. Here's the call. During the run, illegal block in the back against the offense. The pill is 10 yards from the previous spot. We play first down. That's the seventh penalty. Well, we'll find out perhaps tonight, maybe tomorrow, maybe not till Monday where we'll be. LSU at South Carolina or Florida at Arkansas next Saturday, 3.30. And it all begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman. On college football today. First down and 20 from the 30. Here's Mock across the middle. Clayton has it. Got some room. Looks to the outside for blocks. Gets a great one. And Michael Clayton is tackled at the 30 yard line. Justin Vincent, the backup tailback, with an incredible hustle block. And that sprung Clayton for about 20 to 30 more yards. I mean, Michael Clayton is going to get a lot of yardage just on this play. Oh, there's a penalty flag. It might be coming back. But Clayton is going to get some yardage. And number 25 is going to flash in and get a block and spring him for about 20 more. But all of it's coming back, it appears. Flag is thrown way back at the 24. Against the offense. The field is 10 yards from the previous spot. That wipes out a 42-yard game. And the penalties. I mean, you know, this this LSU offense has been stumbling around this whole football game. And penalties are a big reason for that. You know, you make a play and then it comes back. You bobble a snap and it comes back. And they just have not gotten any rhythm going offensively in this football game. Nate Living's. The left guard, there's the penalty, and it was a good inside rush by Ray McDonald, number 95, that drew the penalty. And it's first and 30 after the penalty wipes out the 42-yard game. Here's Mark back, deep, Clayton tipped, and incomplete. Second down, 30. I think some credit should go right now to the inside defenders on the defensive line for Florida because that's been kind of a weakness so far for the Florida defense but Ray McDonald number 95 and Mo Mitchell number 61 who was an offensive lineman last year have really played well in this ball game so far they have held their own inside against this veteran LSU offensive line how about that 124 yards total offense they've got 70 yards and penalties Second and 30, three man rush for the Gators. And that pass incomplete. And let's go down to Jill Arrington for this injury report, Jill. More bad news for LSU's offense. Joseph Adai is out for the game. It's his left knee. It looks like an MCL. He is out for the game. They've iced his knee down. He's on the sidelines. 
Okay, Jill, thank you. And of course, Sharon Carey mm -hmm. he is not playing in this game because of an injury. So their top two running backs bench now. Yeah, same injury. Uh, MCL in the Mississippi State game on his left knee. Joseph Adai, it was his left knee that they were looking at. So uh, we're down to Justin Vincent now. A red shirt freshman out of Lake Charles. Third and 30, and the play clock winding down to 2 1 timeout. What was the word you used? Discombobulated? Yeah. No bling bling for this LSU offense. All right, thank you, Tim. 13 to 7 here with 8.17 to go, third quarter. And a formidable task now confronting Matt Mock and the Tigers. They look at third and 30. And I think he needs to be careful that he doesn't lock in on Michael Clayton here because he's been really looking for him in the last couple plays. Dances right, pulls up, looks for help, tackled at the 25 yard line. It'll be fourth down and 25. Bobby McCray makes the stop. And Charlie Strong saying we need a big game out of McCray. Two yeah. sacks so far. Well, he said that he has the ability to kind of lift up the whole defense. He's He's been doing a little lifting here today because he's been active, he's been aggressive, and he's made some plays, and uh, the rest of this defense is kind of fed off of that. Donnie Jones on to.